Okay, so in this video, I'm talking to you about your discipline plan, and I'm, I have some pet peeves, I guess, about some things that go in the discipline plan, um, just because I think that's what's best for kids. So I'm not going to show you any of the directions. Um, the directions are there for you. So what I'm going to focus on today is kind of talking through about some of the things that I don't want to see inside of your discipline plan. And if I see those things, then I'll definitely count off because I just don't think they're what's best for kids. So first off, in your discipline plan, you're going to have five rules and five rules only. And those rules um, should be age appropriate and pretty specific. So if you say something like um, respect, and that a lot of people put respect or following directions. Well, what does that look like for you? Um, a fifth grader and their response to respect is going to be different than a fifth or tenth grader and their response to respect. So you kind of need to detail out what respect looks like for you. So uh, in those five rules, you need to be pretty specific about what that looks like to you. Um, with the five rules, it needs to be something that really is important to you. So like for me, I never cared if students got up and sharpened their pencils or asked to go to the bathroom, even if they had to go to the bathroom twice. So that, that wasn't a big deal to me. Um, but for other people, it is. So think about what's really important to you and what you want to see in your learning environment and put those in your five rules. Then the next sections are about positive reinforcement. I do want you to think about a positive reinforcement plan. Um, lots of teachers use stickers or they use treasure box or they use tickets or coins or anything like that and any of that's fine um, and then the next section is actually about the consequences uh, to breaking those rules and so here's where my pet peeves come in um, first off no taking away recess um, kids need that activity they need to burn that energy they need to get their wiggles out so don't take away a kid's recess for breaking a rule um, and just think about it you know logically so some of your kids who are acting out the most you want them to have that recess time you want them to have that brain break and that time to get all that energy out uh, before they come back and have to sit longer inside of your classroom so don't take away recess that's a big no-no um, the second thing that's a big no-no for me is using academics as a punishment. So what I mean by that is you can't, you know, give them 100 sentences to write. Um, that's kind of showing them that writing is a punishment or an extra worksheet or um, even time with you as a teacher. You know, don't do that because you want them to like being around you, not see it as a punishment. So those types of things, just think all the way through and, and think about, okay, do I really want to make a negative association with this? And is this really what's going to benefit the kid? Um, or even like detention. You know, detention for me was always kind of like, ugh, it was a beating. It was more of a beating for me than it was for my kids. So I stopped doing detention and found alternative ways to kind of address classroom management inside of my classrooms. The biggest thing is building a relationship with your kids. If you can build that relationship with your kids, you're going to have less classroom management issues and kind of figuring out what is it that's making them react the way that they're reacting. Is it because they don't understand it? Is it because they had a bad night? Um, so kind of digging down and figuring out what's going on with that kid will help. Um, and then lastly, the outside help or interventions. So you really want to make sure that you have tried to intervene yourself first before you get the administration involved, office referrals, calling parents. You should always call a parent before you send an office referral. And you should always contact a parent before you get the administrator involved. You want to show that you've tried that route first and had conversations with that parent before getting the administration involved. Um, however, you always need to let administration know if you're having significant issues inside the classroom because he or she could probably help and assist with you in those areas. So um, one page. That's all I'm looking for. You can put that single space. Um, it can be kind of bullet format as long as I know kind of what your expectation is. If I can see it pretty easily. If not, then I'll let you know and you can correct that for your final ePortfolio link. So I did provide two examples there for you. Uh, they don't have a signature page though and I would like a signature spot at the bottom. Just a lot of teachers are doing that now. So please include that. And if you have any other um, questions or anything, you know, don't hesitate to email me or show up from the office hours.